Hi, my name is Steve Chaika. I'm the managing editor for GIMP Magazine, and I thought I'd uh, take a little bit of time here and do do a director's cut, sort of kind of like when you when you buy a DVD and you have the director's cut that goes with it. Kind of the same thing. Uh, free magazine, and you get the director's cut here on YouTube. Uh, I thought I'd walk you through some of the components of the magazine. Uh, first and foremost, the cover. The cover for us was really important. We went through about seven different designs and finally arriving at this one here. Um, really like the white lettering on the black background and uh, for the masthead and we really liked um, uh, Wilbur here, the new version of Wilbur, thanks to, uh, thanks to one of our followers on, on Google Plus, uh, Clayton Walker, who suggested that and, uh, and, and it's on there and we're good. Of course, this cover wouldn't be this cover without the amazing photograph from Ian Mudo. And we did, we did a complete feature story on him that I'll, that I'll get to soon. And uh, just a little note there about the 6.8 million sticker. That's 6.8 million downloads of GIMP in just two months since the release of 2.8. Uh, this is a huge audience of, of people and uh, that use GIMP around the world. And uh, if you want to verify those numbers, by all means, you can just go to the sites of where you download it from, uh, CNET as well as uh, is it SourceForge or something like that, or I think that's the name. You can just go to the, one of those two sites and they, uh, they have all the numbers disclosed there uh, to, to check out. Uh, the next page here that I want to show you is Table of Contents. Just a couple of quick things. One is this magazine is best viewed using the page display, two-page uh, option if you're using Adobe Reader. If you're using some other uh, PDF reader, then it may look a little bit differently. Uh, but that's basically what I do. And you can have one page on the left and one page on the right-hand side. A um, couple things as well. I can click on any one of these um, uh, stories here, and they are active links. They're just bookmarks, so it, it just simply jumps to that page. And then what I can do is I can type in the uh, the table of contents number and just go back. So PDF users will be a little bit differently, will will respond a little bit differently, but uh, generally that's how this thing works. Um, the letter to the editor. One thing I just want to point out here is that uh, special thanks to uh, GIMP Chat and Blender Art Magazine. Uh, Blender Art Magazine was really the inspiration for doing this magazine here. And um, it was the help from those people who took the time to share with us their workflow and their process that enabled us to sort of form this. The other group I want to kind of thank there is GIMP Chat. And this whole idea for the magazine kind of started on GIMP Chat. How it came up was I asked a simple question. I said, is there a magazine for GIMP? And the responses I got were no. And a couple of people tried it. It didn't work out. And then... It was Jordan that that said, um, "Why don't we create one?" And um, and here we are today. Uh, the first issue of Gint Magazine is out there, and uh, yeah, we're really happy with it. So uh, a couple of people I want to thank here in particular is, are my uh, my team members, um, Jordan, who uh, who's all things submissions and article writing and, and contacting the people that do the submissions. And sorting that all out for us is great. Um, we've got Rod, who's all about the internal forums. Um, things that you guys don't see, but things that our core team members use to, to build the magazine and assemble it. Uh, we've got Dave and Oma, who's been and helping us with, uh, with writing and proofing articles. Uh, Dave, in particularly, I, I meet with him regularly to sort of vision this magazine out and think about it a little bit, plan it, and so on. Uh, Rolf, who is all about our um, our website, our gimpmagazine.org website, and um, he set that all up for us, which is great. Special thanks there. And then, of course, Sandra, who's the latest addition to our team, and she's about proof editing. And she has gone through all 50 pages of this magazine and proofed it for us, which is fantastic and a huge amount of work. So special thanks there, Sandra, um, uh, for your efforts. All of these people do this completely for free and uh, completely voluntarily, and, and I think that's, that's pretty spectacular. So um, 
yeah, so uh, so special thanks to you guys, and uh, it's been you know great working with you, and uh, certainly hope to continue that through issue two, and and future issues down the road. Um, uh, the other thing I want to point out on this this letter from the editor that I wanted to write here was was this, um, and I believe it's a third paragraph here is that. You know, when I thought about this, and this is kind of the driving force for the magazine, was that for me, how it is, is that, that GIMP, the people that created GIMP really enable me to create art and share that art with the rest of the world. And when you enable other people to do this, you really have something special there. And it is a tremendous effort to create the GIMP software and, you know, so I'm really, special thanks goes out to the core game team, uh, the people that, that write this software, envision it, and, and get it going to the place where they want it to go, which must be just incredibly complicated. And then all the people around that core team, you know, so you have your, your uh, the people that write the documentation, the people that test the software, the people that do internationalization, the people that build the website, the people that do the communications, the people that do the download uh, site and the packages and all that sort of stuff. I mean, it's a huge effort. So really, uh, uh, kudos there to everybody at GIMP.org who has, uh, you know, made this possible. And Git Magazine is just a, a, a really small way of saying, you know, thanks. Yeah, uh, page six and page seven of the magazine is really about, um, page six particularly is how to contact us, and there's, there's various ways there. Uh, and page seven is about uh, just a special thanks that I wanted to point out here. Um, Meetthegimp.org, uh, again, a special thanks to Rolf, from, more so from a... Um, advertising component in, in helping to spread the word about Gimp Magazine. He put it on his website and boom, it was just like everybody knew about it, which was great. Um, same with OMG Ubuntu, uh, the people there, particularly Joey. Uh, special thanks to you uh, for helping promote our magazine and that drove a tremendous amount of people to our website to get them to learn about it and then they could go and share that with other people, which is great. Again, another special thanks to uh, Gimp Chat, where the idea for this magazine really got started, and um, and and thanks for that, most appreciated. Um, as well, uh, there at the, kind of the very bottom there, or close to the bottom, is uh, Scribus.net. This entire magazine was actually built in Scribus, in Inkscape, and then of course in Gimp. Um, uh, so all the desktop publishing, thanks to Scribus. Thank you very much. It's great software. It's very much like Adobe InDesign. Um, awesome. So uh, sp some special thanks there. Um, if you want to read a little more detail about our magazine, we have our uh, column here to the right. Um, talks about advertising. Talks about how to contact. Talks about the legal mumbo-jumbo that we have. Talks about the editorial team. And then the production notes as well. Uh, just a special note here, uh, going back to page six, um, BitTorrent. We absolutely uh, yeah, encourage that. So if you guys want to take the magazine, uh, zip it, put it on BitTorrent, and share it with the rest of the world, that's awesome. Please do so. Um, moving right along here, on, uh, on page eight, we have the design gallery. And this really sort of, this bumper here sort of kicks off the design gallery and I really wanted it to be um, attractive and, and I hope I was able to achieve that. Uh, just a simple word design, really hand done, all authentic calligraphy um, on top of this really cool uh, vector sort of um, background that, uh, that was done in Inkscape and I uh, just pulled it all into Scribus uh, um, uh, here and we have a layout for that. And, and this is, was, for me, it was really important because I needed to kick off the next piece here, which is on, uh, on page 10, this work from Adam. And I mean, I just, he submitted this and so many thanks to Adam for doing this. Uh, your work is amazing and it really just kicks off this gallery really well. Um, all I can say is, wow. I mean, 
wow, you got some real talent there in uh, in drawing and illustrating, and and I hope you go so far with that. Uh, you've also got a link to his to his web page at the very bottom there, and it talks a little bit about Adam as well. On on page twelve here, we've got Alberto. And again, all I can say is, wow, you got to check out this guy's website. Absolutely amazing stuff here. Uh, on page 13, we've got Madeline Fisher. And um, we're actually doing a special, I don't know, it's got to be about a 10 or 12 page spread about how Madeline creates her um, graphic novels using GIMP. And that's a really kind of special story. That's going to be running in issue two of the magazine, which is due out early early December, I would say, some, something like that. And um, we're already working on that now. I've already got 66 pages in to issue two, and it'll probably run to be around 100 pages, something of that order, uh, when we're all said and done. Um, so that's Madeline's work. Uh, Erica here, uh, amazing, amazing uh, primarily known for background textures. If you go to the website, you go to the Flickr site, and this is a really cool tutorial here on the left-hand side on page 14, um, which is pretty awesome. And it describes the, the tutorial as well of how to create both of these, which is pretty cool. Um, page 16, I snuck this in, the September wallpaper is kind of a last-minute sort of thing here. Uh, kind of went with the whole fall kind of theme going on. This was created in both GIMP and Inkscape and there is a YouTube tutorial uh, that you can watch. It's about 10 minutes on how to create these from, from scratch. And um, on the right hand side here on page 17, if you're a Second Life user and you use GIMP to create some of your textures for Second Life, you absolutely want to check out uh, this person's work here. Pretty amazing stuff on their website. And then, of course, we got uh, on page 18, we've got Ian Mudo, the Ian Mudo story. So I was, I was luckily, luckily enough, I could meet with Ian, and, uh, and, and I did. And we, we did this uh, story. It was about, I think it was like we met for two hours in a coffee shop in, uh, in my hometown of Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. And um, it's just an interesting story about how I came across Ian's work. And Creative Commons runs into this sort of discussion here. And it was interesting to find out how he got interested in GIMP. And that's all in this story here. In, in all in this, uh, I think it's about an eight-page spread that we, we did uh, with Ian uh, on his photography here. Uh, the cover image, I mean, wow, what can I say? I mean, I love the depth of field. I love the mix of colors and I just love the feeling of the photograph itself. It was very calm, very easygoing sort of photograph and it's just it's beautiful. It's just spectacular work. So um so kudos to uh to Ian and, and many thanks for Ian for uh for helping us with this uh with this story here. This photograph I loved and and it was it was the way the light was basically shining on the wet pavement here and it was the quality of the image that that came out and it was you know how he shot this that was just so spectacular and I thought this would really look cool as a, as, as kind of a background image and then drape the text on top of it and uh, I just I kind of like the way this turned out it's it's I don't know it's just it's just a really nice photograph of something that you wouldn't normally see a photograph of this, but when you see it, it's like, wow, that, that looks pretty cool. Moving on to his, uh, to his fall work here, his fall collection. He has an enormous Flickr website. You got to check out all his, his photography there. He basically gave me sort of unlimited access to his, to his stuff on Flickr and said, you know, post whatever you need on, on, the, on the magazine. And wow, what a difficult job it was to go through and come up with a short list of images that I could put on the website. I mean, that must have taken me hours just to go through that and um, and and decide, having to decide on so few images that I could place paste in the in the uh, in the magazine because it was just a huge selection of amazing photography there. So you got to check out his work and you got to read his story. It's a very interesting story um, um, that he has. Again, the image on the left here on page twenty-two. It's again, it's that depth of field that I really, really like. 
and um, and, and that's that's pretty cool. And then this photograph here of uh, um, of the wide panoramic shot. I mean, wow! All I can say is uh, Ian Mudo. Nice, nice stuff. Just spectacular. Essential GIMP resources, page 26 here. Uh, this article actually started on my website uh, about a year or two ago uh, as just a blog post of sites that I frequented. I shared this with my team. They added a whole bunch of links to it, laid it out on this sort of back to school blackboard sort of look. And, um, and all of these links are click through, which is very handy. You don't have to type anything in. And uh, voila, we have it. This uh, four page sort of article about uh, essential GIMP resources. Uh, some of them are specific to GIMP. Some of them are resources that you would probably use if you're using GIMP. So stock photography, uh, vector art, photog or vector art uh, resources, uh, scripts and plugins, brushes and textures, all kinds of stuff there for you. Um, we're going to keep this article actually live and active on our website. So if you have a suggestion for a really awesome uh, GIMP resource that you use, visit our website. There's going to be a page. I think we're calling it GIMP Links. And just click on that. And at the bottom, there's a little form that you can fill out. You just type in, you know, the name of the link and then the URL. And then we'll check it out. If we like it, we'll definitely post it on our, uh, on our page. So we're going to keep this active as we go. I'm going to just kind of see how long we can, we can, uh, we can take this. On, uh, on page 28, the completion of the article here, uh, at the very bottom, you'll notice uh, right across there, there's um, two ads. And these are actually for uh, people who contributed. So the ad in the left is for Jordan and the ad in the right is for Sandra. Um, you have to check out their website. It's pretty awesome stuff that they do. And um, this is something that we have for our core sort of team members as a way of kind of promoting what they do as well. Um, in that. The, on the upper right hand side there on page 29 you see the save $2,000 and this is actually kind of an interesting thing. When you think about it, if you were to go out and you were to buy the commercial equivalent to GIMP, Inkscape, and Scribus, which is kind of a common thing that you would do. Uh, oftentimes you rarely just use GIMP but you use other packages in combination with that. You're going to pay around 2000 bucks for the commercial equivalent. You might be able to do better than that but generally you're going to be somewhere within that range. And wow, $2,000 will buy you a lot of stuff. I mean, it'll get you a very, these are 2000 Canadian dollars and this will get you like a high end PC as well as, um, you know, a high end camera to boot. So, you know, if you're thinking about GIMP, by all means, check out the magazine, check out GIMP.org, and, you know, think through it, because there's a lot of value in GIMP, Inkscape, and Scribus when you combine the three together. Uh, we have here on page 30 and 31 sort of the kickoff to the photography gallery, and um, the first photograph on page 32 is really the Diego photograph, and I really like that, the look of that HDR photo, the, the little vignette around the edge, the colors that were so, so, um, I don't know, captivating, uh, dark yet captivating at the same time. And then, then you got that kind of perspective view, uh, down the railway, which is really neat. The image on the right hand side, uh, uh, the, uh, the Antonio shot, it's just like, there's just so much character in that shot. And I just, I just loved it. And it's such a clean shot. On the, on the white background, I just thought it was a really great image and, and um, uh, great to feature this uh, in our magazine here. Um, moving ahead, on, uh, on the next page, we have some shots from Ian Muto. Uh, he has so many. you got to check out his gallery, um, his, his Flickr gallery. And um, we also have a shot here from, from Rolf Seinert. And uh, he did a piece on this in his blog on, uh, on Meet the Gimp. So if you want to check out that, you can click that link there as well and, and just do a quick search for it. On page 36, we have uh, the HDR article from, uh, from uh, Tim Stalker. And um, I like the, the quote here 
I came across a reference to GIMP on a Flickr discussion group. I think that's pretty cool. I mean, that's how people find out about GIMP is, I mean, you're not going to see a commercial for it on TV. You're going to find out about it from a friend or a discussion group or something like that. And, uh, and, and that's pretty cool. And that's, that's the same way I, I found out about it from a friend. And then another friend told me about it. I was like, okay, I better, th I better look at this, you know, at least give it a fair shake and, and see how it goes. And that's how I got started on GIMP as well. Uh, really interesting article, sort of a Q&A format. Um, some of our articles are going to be this way uh, down the road. Um, kind of an interesting format here of getting to the story. And, um, and I really like how this article kind of presented itself and how it came about. And then we've got this uh, GIMP 2.8 article. Originally, the vision here was to create, you know, a technical sort of review of all the things. And we realized, you know what? Um, somebody else has already done that and it's on YouTube and it's, you know, it's great. So Dave really surprised me when he came with this and he's like, wow, check this out. Here it is. And I was like, wow, this is a really interesting approach. So rather than do a technical review, it's more of a, more of an opinion, more of a, hey, I use GIMP, but I also use Photoshop and here's how I feel about the whole thing. And, and it's all there. So, uh, so special thanks to, uh, to Dave for, for putting that together for us. Uh, the masterclass bumper here on uh, page 40. Um, I really wanted this to be special because this really kind of kicks off the whole masterclass. And the idea behind the masterclass is to select a piece of art or photography, um, uh, which is art, um, uh, or digital art, uh, which is what I meant to say, and feature that. Uh, someone who has a lot of experience in GIMP and, and walks us through how they created it from start to finish at more of a high level rather than an individual step-by-step -step, uh, sort of piece. And so, so my idea here was to create this really old school looking calligraphy on a backdrop that you know, was, was done you know long time ago, probably from a master of calligraphy in a really old world sort of look. So that was sort of my attempt there. And um, moving ahead here is the masterclass, the make, the making of uh, of green growth, and that's by uh, by Ludovic, and he's from uh, he's from France, and this is actually an actual corner, a street corner in in Grenoble, France, which is really interesting because I I toggled from page forty two all the way to page forty four, and I kind of looked at that image on page the top of page forty four, and I, I found myself going back and forth. Looking at that, I was like stunned that this is actually a real place, and and that's that's how he how he uh, how he made it. I was just like, wow, this is such a great addition to our magazine. We have to feature this in the first issue, and uh, and we did. And I like sort of how he broke it down into the overall steps. It doesn't you know get you into how to use you know the paintbrush or how to do this or how to do that, but it basically walks you through the overall components that you would need to do to assemble this, assuming that you have already a certain knowledge of GIMP and a certain knowledge of art uh, already under your belt, sort of thing. Um, so, so that's what we have there, and um, that takes us up to page 47. I just want to talk about this a little bit. The image on the left-hand side is really the final composite image that gets draped over the original or the second original image to create on the bottom right here the final image, the final composite. And um, I just I like how he put that together for us and how he kind of walked it, walked us through step by step on that. Uh, page 48 and 49 is a little bit for GIMP magazine itself. This is a way for us to kind of communicate out and um, and ask for your help in contributing to this magazine. And basically you can help us in one of two ways. The first is you can submit an image for design or photography gallery. This is easy. Just fill out our form on our website. Just go to our website, look for a page called submissions, fill out the form at the bottom, and um, just click send. And basically we get that, and we just, we just post it in the magazine, we're done. And it's as simple as that. Or if you want, you can write a more detailed feature article. So if you want to do something for a cover story, or you want to do a tutorial, a detailed tutorial, or you want to do a master class, or maybe you got some other idea that we haven't thought of, we're completely open to that. Let us know 
fill out the form, click submit, and there will be a back and forth and we'll develop the, the story or the article with you uh, as we go. But that's how you start is through the submissions page as well. So we've been able to streamline that to, uh, to help us. What I also want to say on page 49 is that basically we're looking for people to join our team. And right now we have a need for, uh, for two disciplines. One is somebody who can write, somebody who has or who can, who can basically chase down a story and create an article for us and acquire images from someone who submits and, and basically prepare that article for ready for the production. It's not proof editing, but it's a step before that. The second type of skill set that we're looking for is people who have Scribus desktop publishing skills. Um, if you do, let us know um, because we would like to farm out some of the pieces to you and then have you do some of the layout for us. And then we combine it all together into a magazine. Uh, so let us know. The bottom of page 49 talks about some of the stories we're working on for issue 2. Uh, we've completed the story for Yeshua Nell. It looks awesome. All I can say is so much thanks to, uh, to, to Yeshua for that. And, and definitely look forward to that in issue 2. Hopefully we'll get some previews coming out a little bit before that. Um, issue 2 is, is uh, prepared for roughly kind of a December-ish sort of rollout. And um, we're definitely on track for that. We've already got about 66 pages in a draft kind of skeleton format right now. And um, we will easily be at close to 100 than we will 50. Uh, in fact, we may even go beyond 100 for issue two. So this thing's really going strong. We're really happy with it. We've got a story that we, we've completed for David Revoy. We've got a story we're working on, which is a detailed step-by-step, -step, well, not step-by-step, -step, but feature-by-feature -feature comparison of GIMP versus Photoshop. We've got a feature on an HDR photographer, uh, Andrea, outstanding work. Probably push that off to issue uh, three uh, because it is really amazing stuff. And, and I should note that issue three is going to be more photography, where issue two is going to be more digital arts. And, um, and that's cool. We love that. Um, we're working on a, on a tutorial for Madeline Fisher, as I mentioned earlier, and we've got a number of other things that we're working on uh, for the magazine. I want to thank everybody for, for submitting work to us, and, um, and uh, we love it. The stuff you're giving us is amazing and fantastic, so thanks. Thanks for that. And the last page here is just a uh, sort of another sort of fake advertisement to my website. Um, this is real. It's, it's a DVD that I prepared over the summer and it's about five and a half hours and I'm um, putting it on a sale price there. And it's basically how to learn GIMP and Inkscape from scratch from a digital arts kind of perspective and design sort of perspective. And um, if you click on that link there, um, or if you click on the picture, it'll take you to my website. You can learn more about it. There's a 10 minute YouTube video on it that, that is a sample of, of what you would expect in the whole thing. Um, and, and, and that's it. So thank you very much. Everybody that helped out with this magazine. Thank you very much. Thank you to everybody who has helped promote us. Um, if you retweeted us, if you plus one us on Google Plus or reshare or whatever, we thank you so much for doing that. It helps to spread the word for GIMP Magazine. It helps to spread the word for open source. And, uh, and that's awesome. So thank you very much.